My name is Kevin Brown. I am the Vice President of Client Solutions at ABM. Going forward, there's going to be a lot more input from every entity in the building about you know, how ventilation is handled, how the indoor environmental quality is managed. I think building owners are going to have to be, they're going to get pressured you know, socially to make sure that they make these changes. They're going to have to invest in making sure that the, the, the air inside the space is properly treated. I think engineers historically have always been, uh, their primary mission was keep the phone from ringing. Make sure that you know nobody's calling them because of hot and cold complaints. And you just keep that to a minimum so that nobody realizes that the air conditioning is running. That's the beauty about air conditioning. You you don't have to see it. You know it's it's invisible. It's all behind the scenes. It's a uh, it's just supposed to be there. It's the thing that we had taken for granted for years and years. HR is going to come into play. I think hiring, recruiting is going to come into play. I think building managers and office managers are going to have a much bigger say and a voice that should be heard now. Strategically, I think more clients are going to be interested in like a recommissioning or at least an annual commissioning service where they verify that the systems are working the way they were designed, um, that they're optimized. I would go back and look at the energy penalties that you paid for you know, overventilating a space. You know, find out where that balance really needs to be. Um, do some testing on the space. I think you're going to have to do that every couple of years. If not annually, it'll probably be on at least a five-year basis um, or faster. Most clients at this point are concerned about building health because they need occupants in the building to pay rent. So I think it's going to be a necessary cost going forward. Budgeting that cost is going to be the hardest part for them. It's, you know, how do you, how do you make sure that you're ventilating properly without overventilating or taxing the equipment or running the equipment out of lifespan faster than it should? How do you make sure that you can maintain that level of operation and that, you know, people will look forward to coming back into your building? How we approach the ROI for upgrading the air and improving indoor air quality in the buildings is twofold. Um, it's really difficult to quantify that social aspect of upgrading the, air, the indoor air quality. Um, what people are expecting to see or feel or perceive is it's hard to put a number to. It's, if they're still paying rent, then it's not like that rent number is changing. If they're threatening to not pay rent and leave, that's where the financial concerns start to hit a building owner. On my side of the fence, I typically concern myself more about the cost to own and operate. So it's that initial upfront cost, it's the, the investment that you have to make to make the indoor air quality better, but does it actually give you an additional benefit of making the equipment more efficient or easier to maintain? And that's where you can make a good case for, this is the reason why you should look at this.